So hello, my name is Hauke. Most of you probably know me. Um, I have the honor to chair the networking session today, or call it networking oh. slash maybe connectivity session. Um, our first talk today will be by Kalle. He is a lecturer here at Aalto University, and um, he is an expert on cellular system in the industrial IoT. And as many people in the right community are probably focused a lot around low power local networks. I guess he will tell us some very good new insights. Uh, you ready? Perfect. So yeah, okay. I give the uh, microphone to Kalle. Well, I don't know, do you hear me without the microphone? Okay, yeah. Um, so my name is Kalle Rötik and uh, um, I'm supposed to replace professor here. So uh, essentially in university we have like, I'm the guy who writes the code and talks with students and professor goes to the presentations. And uh, now he happens to be in Brussels, so I have to replace him. So why you, wh what I can tell you is that, uh, okay, I have been in uh, Aalto University 25 years and seen uh, up and down of cellular systems or cellular industry in Finland. Some 10 years ago, we started to develop uh, software-defined radio-based systems, and uh, it ended up with uh, full implementation of narrowband IoT stack. So we have, we had base station, core network, data goes in, data goes out, and uh, all to commercialize it. So now, if you talk about uh, that, like, uh, way of doing that in, uh, University usually you don't have much ex exposure to different type of industries. In Alto, it is cooperation is like that. Uh, in cellular s systems, you have you talk with uh, Ericsson, Nokia, and now the field of cellular um, development is changing, and uh, everybody is talking to go to the verticals, to the factories, for instance. But even those our partners don't have much exposure to those. So the fact that uh, our base station was commercialized gives me a chance to talk and to, uh, with the people actually from industry who are ac actually maintaining the factories. So in this presentation, I would like to give a bit of the glimpse uh, how these two different worlds are colliding, uh, the cellular world and the verticals or the industrial world and what kind of problems I have observed there. So, is that one working? Yes. So, I have 15 slides. I don't know how much time I have because we are a bit late now. I try to go quickly. So, first, how many of you are familiar with uh, cellular systems in general? Two, three. Okay, good. How many of uh, you are familiar with uh, industrial factory systems? Or a few also. So. There is some new new aspects for maybe for you uh, about that. So I thought to build up a few slides about that to just recall um, general st structure of the cellular systems. Uh, then what kind of applications the industrial industry would like maybe to have or what the cellular system tries to offer to them, and then uh, how the cellular world of view and uh, industrial settings, a word of view, fit together. And then uh, part of the presentation is about the ser service capability exposure function, what is essentially the cellular system uh, attempt to serve um, outside like uh, IoT or, uh, well, in this case, IT customers, let's say. Okay. Cellular system, very general picture. We have the cells, we have the base stations, we have core network which uh, intra, uh, uh, serves the cells. And the main feature of the cellular system is, of course, the, the users can move between the cells. And the big complexity of the system comes through, through the fact that we have to serve the handovers and uh, maintain the connection all the time when the users uh, move in the network. And historically, well, there are the, uh, maybe from that picture it's essentially to know that we have pay stations, core network, and uh, we have the system to serve 
how the users move through it. And it makes the system pretty complex. If you look at the architecture of the system, we have the base station, what is pretty small part of the total architecture. We have gateways which uh, help to transfer the data from the base stations to their uh, end users, which are outside of the uh, cellular systems. And we have a lot of units maintaining the connection, like a mobile management unit, um, uh, service uh, policy control units. We have databases for the encryption keys and stuff like that. And uh, essentially, this architecture has grown out historically uh, through the fact that uh, all those units have been different boxes. They are physically different units. And nowadays, with softwareization of the network, you can put all of these pictures like essentially in the mobile phone. It's even too much of computing power in the, uh, for the core network. So the trend is that it, it can get small but traditionally, it's very huge, huge system. Uh, and uh, okay, now the idea is that has been that the system has been developed uh, for the uh, voice users. For uh, last ten years, the system has been paid by inter internet usage. And for future view, has been that maybe that system future development can be uh, paid by verticals or the industrial users. So the question is how that, uh, that thing, that monster, can be taken into the industrial settings. So if you look at the services, what the people have been thinking, um, what can be put there is that we have a few sides of things. One is that versus monitoring the very slow processes, the data rates are not very high. Um, Every, uh, you get a few bytes every now and then. On the other side, we have extremely high data rate systems where the delays should be really low and high uh, data, uh, data streams is. And now the question is that has been that how to squeeze these things into the cellular systems. If you want to put that into cellular context, that then that's the classical view um, what in the 5G developments people have been putting forward. Most of you probably have seen it. There are three corners is that uh, 5G mobile broadband, that is the traditional system development, what has been, what has been paid for the, um, essentially cellular system is paid by that service. And then, uh, as I said, there are these two low data rate system and high data rate systems, what in 5G, the people have tried to integrate into the system. The problem with here is that uh, there are two, uh, this ultra-reliable uh, low latency corner is the first, it doesn't work at moment. Uh, in 5G at least, it is not, doesn't work reliable enough, so industry is not very much interested in that application because it doesn't work. And the other thing, when I'm talking with the industrial people, they don't see at the moment that they will deploy that in their network. Partly because it's not tested, uh, and the other thing is that the wire um, serves them much better. If, if you can think what is happening is that at the moment they have, uh, if you need a reliable connection, you put the wire there. And the, the signal is going, usually is the current signal, so that if wire is cut, the current doesn't go, you know that it is cut. And now you are, you, cellular world thinks that they are going to replace that kind of wire with a base station and the user, uh, user unit. Base station essentially is like 10 million lines of code. Uh, and that is like extreme, extreme replacement, especially for industrial people. They don't dare to do that one at the moment. Okay, that uh, corner is gone. Uh, now, machine-to-machine -machine type of connection. There, the attempt was to, to introduce something that is competing with LoRa network or, or this kind of thing. And so it is, the market somewhere is there, and now is question how to integrate it with the, with the cellular system. 
The problem is that in the cellular system, the tre trend has been to, high, to have high data rate, um, uh, very few users per base stations who have actually um, streaming type of service. And this service is here in the machine to machine what uh, LoRa, for example, attempts to serve has extremely little data, like few bytes of data transmitted every now and then. Um, and because of that, the uh, overhead compared uh, what comes from the machine broadband system doesn't serve very well with this IRT corner. Um, in order to answer that question, the cellular system has actually for IRT uh, three different ways that you can uh, serve the IRT nodes in band by using N by IRT, for example, service, or you can have in card bands the system, or you can stand alone, have standalone system. My view is that probably standalone system or guard band system is the one what is finally is going to serve the, uh, these kind of services because the, the applications are so different compared to broadband and the IoT systems that it's better to have from op network management optimization point of view actually to keep them separate. So if you look at the IoT system, then essentially the Targets there are pretty, pretty low that we have big data rate about like 200 kilobits per second. So it's very low speed, makes it a very low cost. It can fit into the one GSM uh, bandwidth uh, or GSM channel. Um, uh, in order to keep the price low of the nodes, uh, they are a half top duplex. So at the same time when the base station transmits to the node, the nodes essentially cannot transmit anything. The low transmission power and the deployment, as I mentioned, it can be have in, in, the, in the inside the cellular system or it can be actually in the standalone network. So, and that system essentially has been standardized and it is in the, in, in the deployment already so how, how the 3GPP world is developing is that you have these releases which uh, introduce certain features. And the release 13 is the one, first one when the IoT uh, features were introduced, uh, NB IoT features, the LTMM was introduced. And essentially what we can see that here it was make it work stage and then later releases are to make it right. Okay, they have the system which has rather low complexity, can save power, um, coverage is supposed to be very large and a uh, lot of nodes um, can be served. I don't know whether actually it can happen because I think that there are a lot of limitations due to the fact that uh, NBIRT system has been built on the um, network which is developed for the voice services. For example, when we talk about density, the one base station can serve only 65,000 nodes. Uh, and if there are more nodes, you have to kick the users out because of the ID I, you don't have uh, enough IDs, so you kick users out and then they have to log again into the ne uh, network uh, if you want to have serve more than like 65,000 users. The problem is that uh, you would like to keep the state of the node in the base stations. So do you don't want to log the users all the time into the network or to start the connection again. And uh, you just run out of IDs for the for the network which has more, more users per base station. And okay, th there are a lot of these kind of small, small, small problems which are coming out uh, from the fact that uh, historically the network has been developed for the voice communication. Okay, if you look at the industrial context, then the cellular world concentrates very much on the protocols. We have the L1, MAC, RLC, PDCP, all this specifications with thousands of pages of the, how the signals are going. If you go to the industry, the people who run the factories, 
they are mostly in, uh, interested in the maintenance or APIs, essentially, how to use the things. They have some chemical machinery with some few sensors. They don't, uh, well, they know what are protocols, but they are, uh, they are between, but they are not very much interested. They just want to control some certain chemical process there. So their, their view is essentially like over the top systems and they concentrate on APIs while the cellular people are pushing very much of different kind of protocols and things like, and if you go to the industry, to, in the factory to talk about these protocols, they don't <coughs> really care about that, that, what kind of fancy protocols you have in the cellular systems. Uh, yep. Okay, the features what they would like to have is uh, um, essentially, the things what we has been talked already here is that you have device provisioning, software updates you would like to have, and uh, data transmission over the network. And uh, none of those words, the cellular worlds or the uh, industrial world, actually fully serve those applications. In cellular system, you got in the um, net, uh, network itself comes like uh, security related aspects, the authentication, uh, encryption, uh, registering of the users. It comes inbuilt into the system. You can address users, track users, put the uh, power saving systems, but you really don't have clear support how to update the software, for example. Uh, how to maintain, the, uh, if you have a lot of nodes, how to group them. You don't have interfaces for these kind of things. So what the industrial uh, people are doing, they have uh, over the top like that. Uh, approach by using a cellular system just like pipe for them so that that's why you have this uh, uh, MQTT or uh, co-op application uh, protocols which are using cellular systems just like cable or pipe for transmitting those side of, of features uh, problem with those uh, those over the top system is that they usually end in some cloud or something like that. The node side is very clear. You have collecting bit of data, but where you, where you send this data. When you send it to the cellular system, it has to come out from some other end. And usually the solutions what uh, you have on the market, they end up into the cloud. And the factory people are not very fond of it because they wouldn't like to have their data going to some uh, um, Amazon cloud or the Azure cloud. They would like to keep some, everything locally under their control, and that I, I even don't know at the moment a good solution for that one. Um, how, how to do that? Okay, now um, what has been the cellular world view, how to go to the industry is that. Uh, 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 go into the factories is that the traditional data transmission you have so that you have the uh, data pipe what you set up through the gateways. You have the user base station, then you have service gateway and packet data network gateway. So when the connection need comes, you establish the pipe through all those nodes. And that is pretty useful if you have a lot of data what you would like to stream. Uh, uh, if you have only just few bytes of data, then uh, overhead of uh, setting up this uh, pipe is so huge that it's essentially not worth to do it. So what the answer has been that you can send a few bytes of data in the signaling messages. You have the spatial fields um, in non-access stratum uh, where you can send a few bytes of data. So UE can send uh, its own uh, in si inside signaling message the data, what I have marked with the red one here, it goes to the mobile management entity, it strips out the signaling part and forwards the data part to, to the, in this particular uh, case, into some new gateway, which was introduced in release uh, 13. So that's uh, NITD is the non-IP packet data network domain. And uh, that, uh, those packets can then be mapped to the outside server for access. 
the last message is they can be IP messages, but if you have only a few pipes of data, then it's, um, there is quite a lot of interest actually in industry um, not to have IP traffic at all, because the 20 bytes what you put IP here there already is too much compared to the actually what data you have there, like three bytes or four bytes of some temperature data what you are transmitting periodically all the time. Uh, so if uh, we would like to have IP interface, then the SF has to do conversion of from the non-IP field to the IP in this kind of application. So, okay, now outside world can use the user, access to user data by using this new service, what is service capability enhancement function. Um, and so what it is, essentially it is gateway which allows uh, application server to access the I IP no IoT nodes through the cellular network. So it provides the RESTful API, API uh, and uh, all these features which are inbuilt into cellular system, not all, but most of these, many of those features can be accessed through that uh, interface. So it was first introduced in release 13, and in release 13 it was standardized, um, not the interface from the uh, SCF to the application server, to the user, but actually interfaces from the uh, SCF to the internal units of the cellular system. The re idea is there essentially that different providers can provide different internal units and uh, they all can be communicating to outside world. And how the outside world communication is implemented that would have been operator specific. In release 15, also the outside interface is uh, standardized, they called it Northbound interface, Northbound interface, essentially. And uh, it provides then the certain features, so how it looks like it is. Essentially, we have the internal units in the cellular network, there are interfaces uh, defined uh, how you can access them from the outside application server. So what kind of services you have? You have this authentication, the traditional thing, what is in cellular system. Then you have service discovery modes. Yeah, okay. Uh, and then you can have a policy enforcement features what the cellular system has, for example, how do you deal with, you have overload in the system, how you can route different services from the node to outside world, or if you have a certain type of payload that, uh, how you treat it, how the preferences are set. Um, yep. So that is how the outside world, that what it is for the cellular operators is that uh, um, essentially it can offer the features that uh, how the uh, core network internals can be accessed securely from outside world. It helps for the operators uh, essentially sell new services which are already in the cellular systems, like uh, uh, cellular system can set the quality of service for different tra uh, traffics and now the outside, outsiders can have say about it. TRX is essentially sleeping cycles. You can put the node into the sleep and uh, wake it up every now and then, like I think the longest cycle is like few months what you can put to sleep into nodes. Uh, wake up features what are already system providing then the outsiders can actually try to wake up the nodes. Um, and of course the data transmission for over the top, with over the top services. And I have examples here from the standard of what kind of service it is like you can have location, user activity, or heart beat. Her, um, when the connection is lost, that can be informed to outsiders. Uh, then the connection status, the node can be idle, active, or in sleeping mode, depending how the network is controlling it. 
um, uh, reachability, whether the user is in coverage area and all kinds of error states also can be, are essentially made available through that interface. Uh, yeah, I don't know. The monitoring there is traditional things that you can trigger actions, address uh, user groups, get the information about general system structure, how many nodes you are in certain areas, what are the loads in the network, and these kind of things. So all in all, essentially SCF is an interface which allows outside users to get access to the internals of the, uh, or into the guts of the cellular system. Um, so they, they, it is advertised that it's like nearly real time control feature so because you don't have to go through so many processing steps to get, have a direct interface to the cellular features. And one, one feature what comes here with regarding previous session is that uh, you have, of course, the cellular uh, security rated features for IT nodes which coming for free in CSL because they are built into the system. Um, whether it's going to be used, I don't know. Um, at least at the moment, my opinion is that uh, it needs uh, new, new applications at all in order to come into use because these current systems uh, rolled out in the industry, um, they, they, they don't have much use of the cellular system <laughs> at the moment. Anyway, that was shortly my... Yeah, thanks a lot. Um, is there any questions? Right. Hi. Um, I, I have a question. So the SCAF essentially exposes an HTTP API, this northbound API, in which you can access information about the UE, the SIM-based device, things like the rough location and other relatively sensitive information. So I'm wondering, what, are there any mechanisms in place for the owner of the UE the, or the user or the device to actually prevent that from happening? Can he opt out or something like that? Um, it's usually so that, uh, okay, it depends how, how, how it is. The SIM-based device, the one, uh, who owns the SIM in some way? Uh, one, one application way of doing it is essentially application servers. Uh, it, it, it's some industry player who would like to have some service, so it uh, purchases the SIMs and it owns the IoT devices. In this application, then it, it would not be that you have the device and then you join mm -hmm. some application in the network. It's a bit like other way around, like that. The, um, application server owner deploys the devices. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, thanks uh, for sharing this insights, uh, Kalle. A, a related question. Do you expect that like large um, infrastructure operators, for instance, uh, car OEMs or, uh, or, or, or uh, train uh, people or, or other people actually uh, deploy and control these, these slices? Or do you expect this to be, um, uh, expect this only to be a part of a certain operator that exposes this RESTful API? I mean, do you do you believe that the, car, the the SIM in the car is owned by the OEM or something, or by the by the operator? Um, at least I think German industry uh, <laughs> thinks that uh, they don't want to deal with operators. That's what I have heard. I don't have other <laughs> insights uh, because. It's so critical feature for them that they cannot give the control away to operators for the car, for car manufacturers. So I see there are a lot of pol political tension essentially to use this kind of feature. 
um, about the non-IP traffic that can be transferred um, via those interfaces in the uh, in the uh, LoRa one and similar uh, setups. There is this form of header compression where where um, data is stripped or the where IP packages are stripped down to the actually transferred data, and then at the gateway at the other end expanded again into full IP datagrams. Is something similar possible here? Uh, there is so, a header compression. I don't believe in header compression at all. The reason for that is that you send a few packets like in a few months. And in order to run a header compression, you need some warm up time in order to start the header compression reasonably. And uh, you have so hu huge overhead, you actually you don't have the packets to transmit them. If you use a pre thing, then no setup. Well, then it might come, I don't know. At least the uh, deployments, what we have seen, that the people are not even considering the he IP header. Because if you have conversion unit, which can convert one address to other one, and you have addressing anyway in cellular system coming from the addressing from the SIM cards, so why to transmit it? Yeah, yeah thank you again, Kalle, for the nice talk.